everyone, so I just wanted to make a quick video here showing how to set up a new SD card for the RetroTink 4K. And yeah, you may need to do this for a variety of reasons. Maybe you lost your original SD card that came with it. Uh, or maybe you created enough uh, custom profiles to somehow fill up the 8 gigabytes on the original card. Probably not, but maybe. <laughs> Um, or, in my case, uh, you may have actually a corrupted card where, it, in my case, what that means is that I can't write to it anymore, even though I don't have it on the locked position, it's unlocked. Um, yeah, I can't write to it anymore. And I actually contacted Mike Chi and he said this, I'll, I'll just read you what he says. Um, he said, unfortunately, it looks like we were scammed by the SD card vendor and they sold us a batch with poor and possibly fake flash chips. Mike G. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, so for whatever reason though, whatever reason you need to um, update your card, uh, yeah, this is just going to be a tutorial for that. So yeah, if you like these videos, make sure you subscribe and comment and yeah, like and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, um, these are 8 gigabyte cards, and you can use an 8 gigabyte card, which is actually what I'll be doing in this video. This is a brand new one that I bought. Um, yeah, these are pretty inexpensive too. I'll leave a link to the description. I don't know if I'll be able to find this exact one, but I'll leave a link for a good one um, in the description. Uh, but yeah, I, I actually, <laughs> you can actually also just put it on like a 2 gigabyte SD card. So this is a micro SD card in a regular SD card adapter. So yeah, if you have one of these lying around, you know, you could probably just use these. I don't know what the minimum size is. Obviously two gigabytes is less than eight gigabytes, but I mean, for me, it's been working just fine. But um, but yeah, but we will be setting up a eight gigabyte card just to have the same size, but you should be able to go bigger than eight gigabytes as well since, <laughs> yeah, anyway, probably just, yeah, <laughs> most any SD card would probably be fine. Um, but yeah, anyway. Before we start the update process, I'm actually going to plug this SD card into my computer because <clears throat> um, if it's possible, try to uh, save your profiles. Just get those backed up as soon as possible because during the update process that if you saw my a previous video I did with the update stuff, um, I mentioned how this card was corrupted and I actually lost all my profiles and yeah. It's weird because the profile folder was still there, but like all the data was non not readable. So yeah, just try to update your or uh, back up your profiles if you can. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm going to plug this card in and we will back up our profile folder. So yeah, I'll just use the um, the SD card reader that came with RetroTink 4K, and then I'll plug this into the computer. Let's see, I think it's this side for USB A. Yeah. Okay, so let me get that plugged in. Okay, so here's my Linux computer, and yeah, I'm just going to open up the files here. And you can see here's my uh, SD card, and this is actually my uh, my new SD card since, um, yeah, this is where I actually have my custom profile saved since, like I said, the other SD card actually got so corrupt that I wasn't able to, able to read the data. But yeah, if you can copy your, um, your profiles off of your original SD card, then yeah, hopefully that works for you. But Anyway, either way, you're going to want to open up your RetroTINK 4K uh, file here. Yeah, or SD card or whatever. I can't remember what the original stock SD card is, uh, was called, but I just named my new one RetroTINK 4K. So, um, yeah, so anyway. And then, yeah, so this, and then you're just going to want to take this whole profile uh, folder here and just copy it and then paste it out here on the desktop or wherever you want to somewhere. Um, so, yeah, anyway, just have a nice copy there. And yeah, and then just eject it. Yep, and you can see it says it's uh, ready, can be ejected. All right, so we're gonna take that out. And now I'm going to uh, rip open this thing, <laughs> this SD card. Um, yeah, this is actually one that I bought at a thrift store and it just happened to be an eight gigabyte one, so I got lucky. But yeah, I'll, I'll leave a link though in the description for one that I think looks good. Um, but yeah, anyway, let me grab some scissors and I'll get this one open. Okay, I paused the recording. I can't remember what the last thing I said was. But anyway, I got this SD card out. I can't remember if I already showed this out of the box, but yeah, I cut it out. So now I'm going to plug it into the computer here. Okay, 
let's see here. In there. Okay, there we go. All right. So yeah, so it looks like this is just called, uh, yeah, it's just a 9.9 .9, or a 7.9 gigabyte volume. So yeah, there's not really a cool name on it. So uh, let's actually go ahead and we'll just reformat this card. We'll open up again. This might be different on, you know, depending on what operating system you're using. Again, this is Linux specifically. This is uh, Zorin uh, Linux. Um, but yeah, anyway. On here, there's just this uh, disk um, application. Sorry, this is all in Spanish, but yeah, it's just called disk, I think, in English. But um, yeah, anyway, I can see my 7.9 uh, gig card here. I'm just going to click on these three dots and then format disk. Okay, and then yeah, we, we can just do the fast formatting. Um, yeah, and then yeah, and then we um, I'm pretty sure it does have to be this DOS. I'm actually not entirely sure. This is when I reformat before I just sit on DOS and it works. So yeah, I'll just do that again. Anyway, yeah, we'll just do format. Okay, and then just like that. And then I'm going to click on this uh, plus button here. We're going to create a new partition. And this is where we can name it. So I'm just going to call this RetroTink. 4k oh not that. there we go <laughs> it wasn't quite enough yeah quite enough uh, space there so yeah so then yeah you can see we're doing fat 32 um so yeah anyway just do create and then yeah give it a second here to think about and again i think on windows you just like right click on like when you have when it shows like on my computer you just right click on the disk and then you said format and then let's pick the name and stuff which I guess this is actually probably a little easier, but yeah. But anyway, whatever, <laughs> whatever operating system you're on, you should be able to um, to format it and rename it, or you can just leave your new card the whatever default name it is. But yeah, now you can see our card is called RetroTink 4K. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah. So now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open up Firefox or whatever your browser is, and then you're going to want to go to this consolemods.org/wiki slash file colon rt4k underscore 10 rc 26 that's it and i'll leave a link for this in the description so yeah, i don't worry about having to copy it um but yeah, anyway you want to go to this page because we need to get the original sd card files back on to our sd card um so yeah, anyway just go to this page and then just click on this download link right here this is a zip copy of the original sd card so i'm just going to save it in this directory i made original sd card save okay and it saves pretty quickly all right so yeah then there's just a zip file and again this will be different on you know depending on what uh operating system on but yeah and here i'm just going to do this uh <laughs> this system here whatever it says like to extract or unzip whatever your operating system says yeah just go through that process and unzip yep and then yeah and then once it's unzipped you can see now we have all of our SD card files here and we can delete this original zip file. So we don't need that anymore. So yeah, so these are the files we just downloaded and unzipped. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of them except the profile folder because I'm going to use my custom profile folder that we copied earlier that we made a copy of. However, if you don't have your custom profile, if you didn't make any custom profiles before, then yeah, just copy everything. Um, but yeah, but like I said, I have, an, I have a backup of my profile, so I'm not going to copy that. So I'm just going to click on copy here. And then we're going to go into this, our RetroTINK 4K SD card, 8 gigabyte SD card that we have. We're just going to paste all of these here. And yeah, I don't know, this this computer that I'm using, I think it has a slower um, USB port. So yeah, it takes a second to copy all this stuff over, so... Um, but yeah, just make sure that you <laughs> let this finish before you, you know, extract the SD card. I'll just pause the video while it's copying. Okay, there we go. So yeah, so now that's all there. Okay, so now let's go back to our desktop where we saved our a copy of our... Oh, I've got a bunch of these open. Let's close those other ones. So yeah, so here's our copy of the profile. So I'm just going to copy this one. And then we're going to paste it here. 
Okay, and again, just make sure this is all finished as copying. Looks like there's actually quite a few profiles in there, a lot of files, so yeah, I'll just pause it for a little while this copies. Okay, there we go. So yeah, as you can see, it's all done copying. Yeah, just, that's the biggest thing. Just make sure that everything is done copying before you start to uh, take it out. So, so, um, so yeah, so anyway, so now let's go ahead and take this out. So now, well, yeah, so, so let's just be clear about this. So this is version 1.0 now that's on this SD card. So yeah, I'm going to extract that. And then we're going to plug this SD card into the RetroTINK 4K. Okay, and I actually have my other micro SD card in there right now. So again, whenever you're extracting, you know, taking out these SD cards, just make sure you eject safely on the computer and then turn off the RetroTINK 4K Yeah, before you start taking these out, just to avoid any possibility of, you know, corrupting your data while something's being uh, written to. Yeah. So anyway, now we're going to put in our new uh, 8 gigabyte SD card that we just set up. And I've actually already updated this uh, RetroTINK 4K to the latest firmware, which is of today 1.2.1. Um, however, this now has the 1.0 firmware on it. So I'm just going to show you what happens when we turn on the RetroTINK 4K. Let's see if I can... There we go. So yeah, you can see there's a green light with a little bit of a pink light on the side. Um, and it's just kind of flashing. That's because the firmware that's on the SD card and the firmware that's installed on the RetroTINK 4K is a mismatch. And then, yeah, it just turns off. So then, anyway, um, that's just telling you that, yeah, it's just a mismatch. So you have to have the same firmware installed on the SD card and the RetroTINK 4K for it to work. So what we're going to do, and yeah, so this is how you update the RetroTINK 4K really quickly. <laughs> Check out my other video if you want a more detailed explanation. But I'll just show you this really quick, but basically there's this button back here and where I guess we're actually technically downgrading, not upgrading. <laughs> um, but yeah, if so when you're setting up a new SD card though with version 1.0, you're going to want to hold down this reset button right here. And if you kind of push your finger in, you can you can get it in a little bit. I guess you could also take like your, your old RetroTINK 4K SD card and push it in like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, just something to get in there, a pen or, you know, whatever. But I actually can kind of get it with my finger if I push it hard enough. Um, so yeah, anyway, you want to hold that on though, or hold, hold that uh, reset button in, and then you're going to want to turn on the RetroTINK 4K. Okay. And then you can see there's that pink light. And when you see that pink light, then you can let go of the reset button. And then it flashes. And then it'll start flashing blue here in just a second. Yeah, again, check out my other video. I'll leave a link for that in the description as well if you want more detailed explanation on this stuff. Uh, but yeah, there's the blue flashing light. So that means that it's updating. And then there's that green with a little bit of pink and yellow in it. And so it's almost done. Okay, and then now that it's completely green, now we should be able to um, see something on our screen. And yep, sure enough, I'm going to just <laughs> lift up my camera so yeah, you can see now it is updated and, or I guess downgraded. And yeah, you can see, well, maybe if I can get my camera to focus. Yeah, there it is. So now we're on 1.0. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so anyway, um, and then I guess I'll show you real quick just how to update uh, to the latest firmware. Um, again, check out my other video if you want a more detailed explanation, but yeah, I'll just show you that real quick. Okay, so now to finish the SD card setup, and if you want to update to the latest firmware, so what you're going to do, and I'll leave a link to this in the description as well, um, but yeah, you're going to want to go to this website, and then yeah, just download the, the most recent firmware. And you can, you can supposedly upgrade through the menu, um, however, as you can see up here from going from the launch 1.0 firmware, uh, going through the menu, it's uh, recommended to uh, do the reset method. Again, go watch my other video for more detailed explanation on that. Um, but yeah, anyway, we're just gonna, whoops, just gonna download this 1.2.1 1. Uh, 1. firmware here. Okay, save that, saves really quickly. And we're gonna wanna open it up in our file explorer. And then once again, extract. Extract it right there, close, close. Okay, and then we can delete this original zip folder that we downloaded. 
All right, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take these two folders that we just extracted. We're going to want to copy both of these. And then, oh, I have to plug in my uh, <laughs> RetroTink 4K SD card. Hold on one second. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, so we got these two uh, files copied. Now we're going to open up our RetroTink 4K firmware. And you're going to want, or our RetroTink 4K uh, SD card. And you're going to want to delete this RBF and bin file. So yeah, just select those and delete. And then you're going to want to copy the new ones. Um, so yeah, again, check out my <laughs> other video to see exactly what these mean and what they do. But anyway, that's basically what you need to do to do the reset button uh, update method. And then, yeah, we're just going to eject this. And yeah, then we'll go back to the RetroTeam 4K. Okay, and this is the same process as before. So yeah, so the RetroTeam 4K is uh, once again off. So I'm going to plug in our SD card with the new firmware files on it. And then, yeah, it's the exact same thing we did before. I'm just going to hold down this reset button in the back. If I can find it blindly. <laughs> oh, is that it? Nope. I'm back here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Just pushing the <laughs> the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Okay, there we go. All right, so then, yeah, I'm just going to turn this on. You can see the pink light. So yeah, again, I'll, I'll just pause the video since you already saw this once. But yeah, it will, pack, it will flash pink, and then it will flash blue, and then it will show the green-ish, pinkish light, and then it will be green, and then you're ready to go. So I'll pause the video while it does this. Okay, there you go. Now you can see the light is green. I'm going to go up here. Yeah, I just have my computer running through the RetroTink 4K. <laughs> um, yeah, now if I pull up whoop, focus, there we go. It's a little bit better. But yeah, now if I pull up the menu, and actually you still can't see it. Okay, there you go. But yeah, now you can see that we're updated uh, to the latest firmware. So yeah, anyway, hope this video helps someone. So yeah, this is how you fix the problem of a uh, RetroTink 4K. Um, yeah, gain a new memory card set up on it, brand new memory card. Whether that's because you lost your old one or you just want to have a bigger size of an SD card for whatever reason. Um, or uh, this might be the most likely reason if you're if you got one of the bad batch of the SD cards, um, then yeah, you'll need to get a new SD card. And again, I'll leave a link for a description of in the in the description for a good SD card that you can use. And um, yeah, I also wanted just to mention a an update that Mike actually gave me um, just like an hour ago, uh, saying that he said, unfortunately, we can't offer replacements at this time, meaning replacement SD cards. And he says, hopefully you understand the logistics are simply overwhelming for us. And so, um, yeah, I mean, they are a small company, you know. Uh, yeah, right now they're even having, you know, troubles getting the next batch of RetroTink 4Ks out uh, because they're, like, missing some of the SCART connector screws or something like that. Um, so, yeah, anyway, um, I hope that we can all show them grace. I mean, this is unfortunate, you know, if you do have a corrupted SD card, obviously, it is unfortunate that you know you have to go through this process. Um, however, let's just take a step back and you know maybe just be also grateful that we have you know a really awesome scaler and just uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean SD cards. I mean I I just had this. I just happened to buy this you know before I even had this problem. So I mean and you probably have an extra SD card lying around as well. So yeah, let's just so I I, I recommend that we just show grace. Um, to Mike and all of his hard work and yeah anyway I think that'll do it for this video and uh, yeah thanks for watching and we will talk to you later all right bye